All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Citation to all that I can push the word with true spirit and with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the heavenly father, whom the word and calls God and Jehovah, Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the son's name of the word and calls Jesus and Rechak Wadash, the Holy Spirit. As always, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites, according to Holy Scriptures, as well as the speckled bird, the scattered Israelite foreigners, scattered amongst other nations, whose outer appearance may seem to be other nations to whom they've been scattered to, but whose lineage through their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites, no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. And as always, I'm the brother of your diary from the Great Millstone Merch here in Chicago, and I bet there's another lesson. It's going to be entitled, Do We Have to Keep or Do We Have to Obey God's Law? You know, and they, uh, we're just going to go ahead and get into some scriptures. You know, uh, but I'm going to start with this Ephesians verse two, because they, they, we're not saved by, by, you know, keeping the whole law. You know, it's the scriptures tell you that you, if you offended one, you break the whole thing, you know, hey, we're saved through faith, but hey, our faiths, you know, it's so like our faith coupled with our works is how we're going to be delivered. You know, that's, that's, you know, it, it's a couple, so to say. This is Ephesians chapter two and verse eight. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the most high, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, hey, we're saved by having a faith in the Lord, faith in Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, you know, but that doesn't just give us credence to live any type of way and just say, oh, we believe with our mouth. No, this is Romans chapter three and verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Verse 29, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Speaking of the Israelite foreigners, it says, verse 30, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. It says, verse 31, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. So hey, although we have this, you know, we have faith, we're saved by faith, you know, can we cast off the law? Uh, it says, the, the apostle Paul said, God forbid, yea, we established the law. So let's go into that word void. It says, ver, uh, void, uh, categorio, categorio. It says to render idle, unemployed, inactive, and operate. That was for that word void. It says to cause a person or thing to have no further efficiency, to deprive of force, influence, power, to cause, to cease, put an end to. Do away with, annul, abolish, to cease, pass away, be done away, to be severed from, separate from, discharge from, lose from anyone. So hey, that's that word void. So do we then uh, uh, cause the law to be done away with, put it into? He said, nay, we establish the law. And that, uh, what the strongest definition of that void is literally or figuratively abolish, cease, cumber, deliver, destroy, do away, become. Make of no none without effect. So do we make the law without effect? No. It says we establish the law. And what's that word establish? Uh, it's his histemy. It says to cause or make to stand, to place, put, set. It says, uh, it's like it. it says to bid to stand by in the presence of other in the midst before judges, before members of the Sahirin. It says to place, to make firm, fix, establish. To cause a person or a thing to keep his or its place. It says uh, to set or or place in a balance. Uh, going back to point two, it says to stand, be kept intact. Uh, a family, a kingdom to escape in safety, to establish a thing, cause it to stand. Uh, a right here says to uphold or sustain the authority of force of anything. Uh that's pretty much all of them. Let me see what the strong says. That was the point right there. It says the same meaning and use for it in certain certain tenses to stand trans transitively or interestively. It says used in various applications, literally or figuratively. Abide, appoint, bring, continue, covenant, establish, hold up, lay, present, set up, stand, stand. So hey, we we hey, we cause the law to stand. It, it's still set up, man. Uh. What was the one I was just reading? It says to uphold or sustain the authority of force of anything. So that's that word for establishment. Hey, the law, <clears throat> we don't have the right to just do whatever the hell we want and call on the name of, you know, cheese and rice, you know, and we good. No, 
This is James chapter 2 and verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? So hey, James, he's like, look, what good is it that you say that you have faith, but you have no works to prove your faith? It says, if a brother or sister be naked or in destitute of daily food, and one of you saying to them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Right. So say you got a, you know, you got a, a bro or a sister in the faith. She like, I'm hungry. I need some food or whatever. And you like, go be full. Go be filled. You know, you told them, you know, but hey, hey, you physically didn't do nothing. What doth it profit? Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. You see, they it's a couple. They work hand in hand. Verse 18. Yeah, a man may say. Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And that you, hey, you got a, a billion Christians on this planet that say they have faith, but they're living contrary to have, how the Heavenly Father wants them to live. It says, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Apostle James said, I will show thee my faith by my works. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one power, thou doest well. The devils also believe in tremble. Verse 20, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You have to have them. Was not Abraham my father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? And they, uh, our forefather Abraham, and he had faith in the Lord. And they, how did he prove his faith? He went and did what the Lord told him to do. Now, the Lord didn't have him sacrifice his son, you know, but hey, he, he, hey, he was willing to do it. You know, he, he went, he almost went through with it, you know, and that was a show of his faith. It says, uh, verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. So a, his faith was made perfect, uh, because he had that work behind it. He wasn't just a, uh, you know, a, a, a verbal, you know, a believer, but you know, well, he wasn't just saying it, but a, he was actually living it. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith that Abraham believed the most high and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of the most high. Verse 24, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith uh, only. So, hey man, that's, that's cold cut. It says, verse 25, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. And they, they, we can go back to this account. You know, uh, she received the men of Israel, you know, and uh, she basically got them, got them up out that jam, so to say, you know, and, and you know. And they, she deliver a household. It says, verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And that's closed cut. You close the book right there, man. A, a faith and works go hand in hand. You can't just say, I believe in God and, and just leave it at that. No, if you believe in the Heavenly Father, it's going to lead you. You're going to lead your you're going to live your life a certain way. We're going to prove it some more. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord, Yahweh Shai, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please the Most High, so ye would abound more and more. So the Apostle Paul, he said, uh, this is how ye ought to walk, how you ought to live your life. It says, and to please the Most High, so ye would abound more and more. You see, the Most High is not pleased with, 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 with iniquity, sin upon sin. He's not pleased with that. This is 1 Samuel 15 and 22. It says, And Samuel said, Have Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than a fat of ram. So to listen to what the Lord told you to do the first time, and to obey him, the Lord is pleased with that. You can't just say, okay, I believe in God, but 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 do everything he told you not to do. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 2. It says, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord, Yahweh Shai. <laughs> verse 3, for this is the will of the Most High, even your sanctification, that ye shall abstain from fornication. So let's go into that word sanctification. Uh, Hagi Asmos. It says uh, consecration, purification, the effect of consecration, sanctification of heart and life, uh, properly purification, consecrate, consecratedly holiness, sanctification. We go into that root word is hagios. It says to render, acknowledge or to be venerable or hollow. When you hollow, it means set apart. You know, it says consecrate things to the most high. 
It says, uh, dedicate people to the most high. It says, to purify, to cleanse externally. To purify by expect expectation, free from the guilt of sin. To purify eternally by the renewing of the soul. So uh, we're going to go into the root word of that. Uh, we'll go into the Strong's. It says, to make holy. Holy means set apart, purify, or consecrate. Mentally, to venerate, hollow, be holy, sanctify. So a... Uh, that a hey, this is the will of the most high even your sanctification you're you're set apart you see when you follow the law such commandments you know of course you're gonna have that faith in the lord but when you uh have when you do follow those laws such commandments it sets you apart you see the whole hey, as the scriptures say gross darkness covers the people the whole world lieth in darkness a hey, everybody in this world that's not doing what the heavenly father says this is what they are this is uh Revelation chapter 22 and 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So a hey, blessed are those that keep the commandments of the heavenly father. It says verse 15, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love and make of a lie. So if you're not trying your best, you know, because of course we're not going to keep the whole law, you know, by no means. This is just a mere rehearsal. But, hey, if you're not doing those things, if you're not trying to, uh, you know, keep that law, the law of sex commandments to the best of your ability and you're just living totally opposite, you know, and just saying with your mouth, you believe in God. Hey, you're no different than all of these people in the world. Dogs, whoremongers, sorcerers, murderers, liars, man. You see, we just read up in that Thessalonians that hey, uh, th this is the will of the most high is that you be sanctified. It says, uh, continue on, it says that you should abstain from fornication, you know, which uh, idolatry, of course, and you got, you know, uh, sexual immorality, of course. But this is uh, John chapter 15 and verse three. It says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And hey, this is what this word does. When you go into the Holy Scriptures, when you go into the law, you read what, what the Lord does and does not approve of. You see, this is Psalms 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So you're cleansed, you're sanctified when you come back into this word and you, and you start washing that old man off you, you know, and you're renewed in the spirit. It says uh, Ephesians 5 and 26, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So, hey, that's how you do it, man. You go into the scriptures, you figure out, okay, I can't, I can't eat this, but I can't eat, you know, some, I, I can't eat pork, but I can eat turkey. I can't eat shellfish. But I can, you know, have me some, uh, I can have me some lamb, you know, and the Lord sees that and he's pleased with that. Okay. It takes faith to do that, you know, but hey, this is first Thessalonians chapter four and verse four. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So it's a certain type of way you're supposed to, uh, you know, uh, it's a certain type of manner of life that you're supposed to live, you know? That a uh, vessel is, is is the body. And what is the body? This is 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. It says, flee fornication. Every sin a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sin him against his own body. Right? Verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of the Most High, and ye are not your own. You see? Hey, 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 our bodies are a temple, man. You know, hey, hey, the Lord is dealing. He's dwelling in us, right? It says, verse 20, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify the most high in your body and in your spirit, which are of, so like it, which are the most highs. So, hey, when you come into the knowledge of this truth, man, hey, you're not living to yourself. You're living unto the most high. You're living unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you know? And you can't have a, a, a polluted vessel. You know, a, a, a our bodies are the, what is this the one I'm looking for? Oh, that's one of them. But a, a, our body is the temple, man. You can't just be defiling your temple. Matter of fact, that's the one I was looking for. This is, uh, this is first Corinthians three. <laughs> this first Corinthians three and verse, uh, 16, it says, know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High and that the spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you, right? 
You, you can't just have a defiled vessel, you know, and the Lord is supposed to be dealing with you. No, the Lord is holy. He said, be holy even as I am. It says, verse 17, if any man defiled the temple of the Most High, how do you defile the temple of the Most High? A living contrary to what he said, eating abominable things, doing abominable acts. It says, if any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. For the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple ye are. You see? This is uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are the Most Highs. So we, we have to live a certain type of way. We got to glorify the Most High. <laughs> this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, not in a lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not the Most High. Let me go into that word, uh, concupiscence, in a blue letter. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5. This is First Thessalonians chapter four and verse five. It says, "The desire, crave, and long and desire for what is forbidden, lust, epithymia, a longing, especially for what is forbidden, concupiscence, desire, lust after." Uh, the root of that word is, what's it? Desire, long for. You got two different roots. Let me see what this one is. Before. See. Passion, angry, heat, boiling, glow, and flame and wine. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, but that concupiscence. It says desire, crave, and longing, desire for what is forbidden, lust. So uh, a lust for something that's wrong, basically. A longing for what's forbidden. But uh, this is the, I believe this is the etymology right here. It says, or ardent desire. Let me see what that is. Passionate desire. Improper or illicit desire. Lustful feeling. Eager desire. It says to be very desirous of. To long for. So basically, yeah, illicit desire. A desire. So something you won't, but what's for, forbidden. So a first print first Thessalonians four and five, not in a lust, the desire of concupiscence, which is a illicit desire, even as the Gentiles, which know not the most high. So we're not supposed to uh conduct ourselves as 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 uh <coughs> as people that don't follow the gospel, so to say. The, those that just do whatever they want, that that have no temperance, that don't fight the flesh, you know. This is Ephesians chapter four and verse seventeen. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of the Most High, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. So hey, we're not supposed to walk as as uh as 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 the Gentiles do, so to say. You know, we're not supposed to walk uh just doing whatever we want. Whatever we want, serving whatever we want, uh, eating whatever we want, putting all types of marks on us. We're not supposed to do that. It says, verse 19, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. Let me look at that word lasciviousness. Villain or villain, an over and an offensive, or often offensive sexual desire. <sighs> you get this in blue at this like it. Ephesians 4 and verse 19. This is uh, Ephesians 4 and 19. I'm going to go to that word lasciviousness really quick. Unbridled lust, excess, licitiousness, lasciviousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shameless insolence. From compound as a negative article, and I presume so, just of uncertain duration, but apparently meaning continent. It says uh, uncertain duration, but apparently meaning continent, licitiousness, sometimes including other vices, filthiness, lasciviousness, wantonness. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a point. It says, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. It says, verse 20, but ye have not so learned Hamashiach, 
If so be that ye have learned from him, have ye have heard him, Salaki, and have been told by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shai. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, which conversation goes into conduct, manner of life. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So you put off that old way of life that you used to live before you knew this truth. When you was walking in the vanity of your own mind, doing whatever you want. When you when we were celebrating Christmas, when we were celebrating uh, Easter, when we were celebrating uh, uh, Thanksgiving, you know, when we was eating whatever we want to eat, when we talk to that dude girlfriend, you know, when we text that dude girlfriend, you put off that, you know, it says, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So you, hey, you renew yourself, man. You wash yourself. It says, and that you put on the new man. So hey, you're, yeah, you're born again, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. So now you have that, you have the knowledge of the Lord. You know, a hey, hey, it tells you when you get that knowledge of the Lord, you get the fear of the Lord and that drive away sins. It says, this is Sirach 1 and verse, Sirach 1 and 20. It says the root of wisdom is to fear the Lord. So first you have to fear the Lord. Then you get that 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 wisdom. It says in the branches thereof are long life. It says the fear of the Lord driveth away sins and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. So hey, when you get the knowledge of the Lord, when you get that wit, that that first you get the fear, then you get that wisdom. When you get that knowledge, then you get that wisdom. And then hey, hey, you were you change your ways, man. You know. This is uh I'm gonna hit verse. Ephesians 4 and 24 again, it says, Now you put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. So, hey, hey, you're a new creature. You're not doing the same things that you used to do when you figure out that hey, the Lord requires uh, you to change, you know, repentance, to be sorry again. This is 1 Thessalonians 4 and 6, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Verse seven, it says, for the most I have not called us to, to so like it called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. So hey, the Lord haven't called us to uncleanliness. And that word uncleanliness is, uh, our, is akatharsia. It says uncleanliness, uh, physical in a moral sense, the impurity of lustful, luxurious, pro, uh, pro profilic, living of impure motives, impurity, uncleanliness. Going to the root of that, uh, let me see, Whew. it's arc, ek, athartos, it says not cleansed, unclean, in a ceremony sense, that which must be abstained from according to the Levitical law, in a moral sense, unclean and thought in life, and how do you know what's unclean, what's clean and unclean? In the books of A, in the law of Moses, man, in the whole, in the whole scripture, in the whole book, you know. But hey, you go down some more, it says, in a moral sense, unclean and thought in life. It says, uh, presumed derivative of meaning cleanse, impure, ceremonially, ceremoni ceremonially, morally, or especially demonic, foul, unclean. So the Lord have not called us to demonic, uh, uh, unclean lewd morally lewd ways but into holiness man and holiness is the same as sanctified set apart holy uh, consecrated special you know uh dedicated unto the lord you know this is first thessalonians 4 and 8 he therefore that despises despises of not man but the most high who have also given us Give unto us his Holy Spirit. And hey, at the end of the day, anybody that's telling you that you don't have to keep the laws of God, ultimately, hey, they don't have a problem with, with you. They have a problem with the Heavenly Father, man. Why, why would you argue? Hey, the scriptures tell you that the laws are not grievous. If the, hey, the Lord said in the book of Isaiah, I, I, I got to grab it really quick. Uh, speak. Vain. This Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 19, my father, I'm starting at 18, it says, But thus saith Yahweh that created the heavens, the most high himself that formed the earth and made it. He have established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. So hey, the Lord created everything, right? It says, verse 19, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said, Not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. 
I, Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. The Lord tell us not to eat certain things because they are healthy for us. You know, he tell us like he tell us not to eat certain things because certain things uh will, will destroy our bodies. You know, they lead to uh all types of sicknesses, man. That's why the scriptures say this. Hey, 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 the Lord tell you not to sleep with another man's wife because that creates confusion. That creates a, a, a disrupt in a family. And that leads to generations of, of corruptness. You know, hey, the law of the Lord is good. Laws not grieve. Commandments not grieve. Let me find it. This is 1 John chapter 5 and verse, if I'm going to get in the blue letter, 1 John 5 and 5. This is 1 John chapter 5 and verse 5. It's like a 5. And 2, it says, by this we know that we love the church on the Most High when we love the Most High and keep his commandments. For this is the love of the Most High. This is love, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Let me go into that word grievous really quick. Heavy and weight murder, uh, metaphor, burdensome, weighty, of great moment, violent, cruel, unsparing, grievous, heavy. Let me go into the root. Weight, burden, trouble. A load authority, but basically they they are not grief, they're not cruel, they're not unsparing. The Lord tell us not to do these things because they this this is the law of life. This is how you live the most efficient, best way on the planet Earth. You not sleeping with your neighbor's wife, a that leads to 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 envy, strife, uh, jealousy. Now he want to put you to death. A a the law of the Lord is perfect. You know, a if the law is done away with, why is the Lord gonna write the laws within every Israelite? In the second covenant, it says that in the Old and New Testament, you know, but continuing on, this is a uh, first Thessalonians chapter uh, five and 22. It says abstain from all appearance of evil and a hey, hey, was evil was bad. According to the heavenly father, man, a hey, read in the Holy Scriptures, man, you know, but hey, this is Matt Matthew chapter five, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And this was Yahweh Shai. He said, I'm not here to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. See, the Lord, he came to fulfill what was written, what he had to do. It says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle showing no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So he told you once again, look, ain't nothing changing from the law, from, from the Bible, from any, from any of the scriptures. It says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And this was from the Lord, Yahweh Shai himself. When he healed people, he went and told people, sin no more, offend less. You see, it didn't even tell you, whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and teach men so. So whoever tells people, oh, it's okay not to keep the law as commandments. You can eat pork and catfish. They should be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do them, so actually apply them and teach men also, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Because ultimately, you tell, you're teach, you're bringing the sheep back to the heavenly Father. You're creating the fruit. You're 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 uh, training. You're you're leading the sheep of the uh, of the heavenly Father back to Him. You know, a hey, 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 you telling our people that they can eat whatever they want, just call them cheese and cheese and rice. A, a, you're scattering the flock of the Lord. You know, this is Romans chapter seven and verse seven. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? The most high forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law has said thou shalt not covet. So hey, the scriptures, a, a, the law is good. You know, the law isn't bad. It says I had not known sin, but by the law. So the apostle Paul was like, look, I look. This is the this is the book that tell me what what not to do, what to do and what not to do, so to say. No, this is Proverbs twenty eight and four. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. If you if you're telling if you're telling individuals that they don't have to keep the law as commandments of the Holy Scriptures, you're telling you're praising a uh, uh, adverse to God life, a uh, uh, contrary to God lifestyle. Man, uh, you're you coming in the spirit of anti Messiah. It says, but such as keep the law contend with them, right? Because it, ultimately it's a battle versus evil and good, you know? 
This is Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Okay, we, we're under grace, so we can do whatever we want. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So, hey, hey you can't live just how you want to live, man. You know? This is Romans 6 and verse 11. It says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive through the through, it's like alive unto the most high through Yahweh Mashiach our Lord. It says uh verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. So wait, point blank and simple, point point plain and simple, man. The apostle Paul tells you once again, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, meaning don't let uh Doing what's contrary to the heavenly father, what's sin, transgression of the law. Don't let uh don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Don't have don't let it take control of you. Don't just do whatever you want to do. You know? It says uh that you should obey it in a lust thereof. So you gotta fight it, you know. You can't just go and pick up, you know, you can't just go and call that dude wife up. No. You can't just go and go or go in a restaurant and order some catfish and shrimp. No. It says, uh, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So don't yield your body as as an instrument to to, to uh, multiply iniquity, to multiply sin. It says, but yield yourselves unto the Most High as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto the Most High. But a hey, listen to the Lord. Take heed unto what the Lord told you to do. You know, a hey, hey, surrender yourself up to the Lord and, and do as he said. It says, verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So a sin, a although you're under 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 grace, a sin is not to have dominion over you. You know, you're not supposed to just do whatever you want. And I keep saying it like that because ultimately that's what it is. It tells you that uh, uh, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, you know, and, and thinking that you can do whatever you want. You're, you, that's a rebellious spirit to have. It says, uh. Verse 15, what then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to obey whom ye obey. So like, let me read that again. Verse 16, it says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey. So look, whether you yield yourself to, uh, whether you give yourself up to servants, it's like you. I don't, I don't mean to trample. Let me hit 16 again. It says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So you can either serve sin and die or be obedient, yield yourself up to the most high and it be accounted for righteousness. It says, verse 17, but the most high be thanked. Oh, that is so weird. It's like it. Working on that. Okay. Verse 17, it says, but... But the Most High be thanked that ye were were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. And we were once, in, uh, uh, you know, ran and ruled over by sin, but hey, we came to the knowledge of this truth, and we were free from that, you know. And hey, now we're serving the Lord and, and putting up a fight, man, you know. <laughs> This is Romans chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, I speak after the manner of men because of the affirmity of your flesh. For ye, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity and to iniquity, even so now ye yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Let me go and grab that word yield because we ran across it a couple of times. So Romans 6. And that was just a major cut right there. This is Romans 6 and verse uh, 19. might have to read it the word yield is part peristemi to place beside or near set of hand to present pro, to proffer to provide it's to stand but to bring into one's fellowship or intimacy to stand beside stand by or near to be at hand to present to exhibit, offer, recommend, substantiate, to be a hand, aid or assist, bring before, command, commend, give, presently, present, pro pro prove, provide, show, stand, before, hear up, yield. So basically, to serve, to, to uh, 
as it just said, bring before command, give presently, present, stand before, yield. Let me read up in here. This is uh, Romans 6 and 19. In the NIV, it says, I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to, just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, lean to holiness. <laughs> That's a cut, man. I'm gonna jump into back in, back up in this uh, Romans six and twenty. It says, "For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness." What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Right. So what what's, what what fruit did you have when you was being wicked? It says, for the end of those things is death. That's that's what sin brings you. Anybody telling you that you don't have to follow the law, such commandments, and the holy scriptures are telling you that you can serve sin. And when you serve sin, a hey, hey, you you're gonna you're gonna receive uh, the uh, fruit of sin, which is death. It says, but now verse twenty two. But now being made free from sin and become servants to the most high, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So hey, now that you're serving the most high, hey, the fruit that's going to come with that, the benefit of that is everlasting life deliverance. Verse 23, for the wages, the pay, the payment of sin is death. But the gift of the most high is eternal life through Yahweh Mashiach, our Lord. So it's plain and simple, man. Look, you can serve sin and die. Or you can serve the Heavenly Father, you know, and, and live how you want you to live, which is as holy as possible, as godly as possible. And a how right does I get that everlasting life? This is first John three and four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. If this if the holy if the law didn't even matter, why are they why is this even written in the New Testament? You know? This is first Peter chapter two and verse eleven. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. So, a hey, put off that flesh. A hey, the a hey, the flesh. That's the fight. The flesh wants to. Hey, it wars against the spirit, as it just said. Uh, it says, uh, abstain from flesh fleshly lust. So the desires of the flesh, which war against the soul. It says, verse twelve, having your conversation, your conduct. Honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify the Most High in the day of visitation. So these people are going to look at us and try and say we doing this and doing that. But hey, when the Lord comes back, he's going to see that we were actually doing the right things. This is First Peter 2 and 21. For even here on two are ye called, because Hamashach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye shall follow his steps. So hey, hey, ain't that what the what Christianity is, follower of the anointed, right? It says that ye shall follow his steps. Verse 22, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. So a hey, clean cut right there. Hey, you, hey, we got to be, we got to try and be as, be uh, like the Lord as, as much as possible. Scripture just said it. But hey, the first thing it said, who did no sin. Now, of course, we're not going to be perfect, but hey, hey, we still got to try. This is Sirach chapter 15 and verse 11. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away, for thou oughtest not to do the things that he hateth. And that's what it boiled down to. Don't do the things that the Lord don't want you to do. It says, say not thou, he have caused me to err, for he have no need of the sinful man. Right. The Lord doesn't need a sinful man. He don't need one. The second answer is nine and seven and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. The only people that's going to be delivered are those are those ones that have the faith, you know, and Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and also have the works, you know, because they go two and two. You know, you can't have one without the other. The Lord ain't just going to come back and save a couple, a bunch of people that just been, you know, saying it with their mouth. No, he's looking. Hey, as it says in the book of Isaiah, the Lord will. will uh, I'm going to grab. We're going to end it on that one. Redeemer, turn. This is Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression and Jacob, save Yahweh. So, hey, the Lord is coming back for those that have that faith and those works. Call Halayim La, Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rechak Wadash, that belongs to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Salutation to all the I can push the word with truth, sincerity, and with charity. Shalom, Barakatham, and a Bible ball.